Hey there, uh, welcome back to the Intro to C-Sharp using Unity series. So today we're going to talk about arrays. An array is a variable that can hold multiple different variables of the same type. For example, an array of integers can hold integer values, an array of floats can hold float values, an array of boolean values can hold booleans, and so on. Uh, there, are, You can even make an array out of things that are custom classes, for example, uh, you can make an array out of stands if we wanted to, this other script that we created. You can also make an array out of things that are unique to Unity. For example, the way that Unity does vector threes or quaternions. Um, pretty much anything that can be turned into a variable can also be turned into an array. And to look at exactly how we do this, let's go ahead and open up the intro script here today so that we can get started right away with code. Okay. So in my intro script here, up in my global variables uh, place, I'm going to start by just creating my um, array of integers. I'm going to leave it to be private right now for a little bit, and because something kind of wonky happens to arrays when you make them public. We'll talk about that in a second. So for now, I'm just going to call this a um, integer. And if I don't put a, a public or private in front, C sharp is going to default that to be private. So I'm going to make integer. And to turn this into an array of integers, instead of just being one, I use the square brackets, which can be found up above the return key. So I'm going to do open close square brackets, which turns this into an array of integers. And I'm going to call this example. Now, right now, this has created a container, which can hold many things. But right now, there's nothing in it. If I want to, I can preload this array with some values. So I can say that this is equal to. And in order to stuff this array, I'm not going to use the square brackets now. I'm going to use the curly ones. So open a curly brace. And let's just say 0, uh, zero 1, <laughs> 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, even though I'm using the values 0 through 5, there's six of them there. So my array now has a size of six. So there are six things in it. Now, just to show you that Unity knows that there are six things in this array, I can go down here into my start method. I'm going to add a debug statement, debug.log. And what I want it to do is I want it to tell me the length of my example array. And so to access the length of an array in C Sharp, you use the dot length command. So Example.length. And I'm going to save that really fast here. Uh, if I go back into Unity, I'm going to let this compile. And while it's compiling, I just want to talk about a few things here. There's more than one way to create an array. And the way that I'm creating it right now is just one of them. Um, you might have learned other ways from other people. And I'm going to discuss a couple other ways in just a second. All right, so if I hit my play button here, I should see a little message pop up in my console telling me how long my array is. It's telling me my array has a length of six. And I have another debug statement left alone here from last time. I'm just going to comment that out really fast. All right, so this is telling me what the length of my array is. Now, you don't have to choose what's going to go into the array. Instead, if you wanted to, you can just know how big you want the array to be. For example, let's say you want to have 99 things in your array. So I can say integer array example is equal to, I'm going to make this a new integer array. And inside the square braces, I'm going to put the length that I want the array to be. So let's say I want it to be 99 things long. So I'm creating an uh, array example. And this array is going to be 99 things long. So now, when it prints out example.length, it'll print out 99. So let's give that a try once Unity is done compiling here. All right. Now, in case you're wondering, see, there we go. In case you're wondering, arrays can be used for quite a few things. There are many situations you can probably think of where you might want to store multiple pieces of information of the same type. Um, for example, if you're doing something in Overwatch like um, a Tracer's Rewind ability, you'll want to have a certain number of uh, essentially steps 
the player is taken so that you know where to send the player back to. Uh, also, you could have high scores saved in an array. Uh, there are many other things you can possibly think of. Anyway, back to this. So by setting my example equal to new uh, integer array of length 99, I can do that right after I declare the array, or I can do it um, in the start method. But I have to do it before I uh, do anything with the array. So here I'm going to say example is equal to new integer array and I'm going to make it of length 99. It just has to happen somewhere because right now by creating this here I'm creating an empty container that C Sharp doesn't even know how big the container is. We're just reserving a space in memory for a container that is integer shaped. We don't know how big that container needs to be until we tell it either by assigning a value to it, so again, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or by telling it how big to make that container. Now, one thing that's kind of a catch about arrays in the version of C-sharp that Unity uses is that unlike in dynamic languages, they cannot be resized. Um, using JavaScript, you can do all kinds of things with arrays. You can uh, dynamically add to the end, dynamically add to the middle, you can sort them, um, you, can you can return a value and remove it at the same time. You can't do any of that with C Sharp. Uh, instead, to do stuff similar to that in C Sharp, um, what's used is something called a list. Um, let's see, what else was I? Oh, yeah. Also, when you're creating uh, an array and you're telling it how big the array is but not what's going to be in it, by default, uh, that array is going to uh, have the value of whatever the default for that variable is. For example, integers and floats default to zero, strings default to an empty string, meaning nothing, uh, a Boolean value defaults to false. So for example here, if I wanted to call and find out what one of these uh, 99 values was, let's say I want to display example, because I'm calling the example array, and then to call upon a specific value in the array, I'm going to use the square brackets again. And let's say I want to call example 0, which might seem weird if you've never done any programming before. But arrays are 0 indexed, meaning that the first element in this array isn't 1, it's 0. And the last element in this array isn't 99, it's 98. But because you're counting from 0 to 98, it's 99 elements. Anyway. So I'm going to save my script again here, pop back into Unity, let that compile for a second, and then I'll hit play. And it should display what the first value in that array is. First value is 0. Now I could call any of the values in the array that I want to from 0 to 98, but there's a common error that people have when they're working with arrays, and honestly I've, I've heard this question so many times. Um, if you get a specific error that's called an index out of range exception, it means that you're calling on something from an array that doesn't exist. So for example, this array here that we've created has 99 values in it. Those values go from 0 to 98. If I wanted to call value negative 1 or even value 99, because even though it has 99 values, those values stop at 98, I'm going to get that index out of range exception error. And just, you know, as a forewarning, whenever you see one of those, it means that you're calling on something from an array that isn't there. So index out of range exception, array index is out of range, and the index is this number right here, and it's out of range because I'm calling for something that is past what this is able to do. Okay, so let me change our array here really quickly just to show you some other things. So I make this be zero. Um, this is all working with a private array. If I turn this array public, I can still pre-assign a value to it. So I'm gonna say public integer of our public array of integers example is equal to and I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, so that it's a slightly different array. I'm going to save this really fast, and if I hit play, it's going to 
try to print out example zero, but something weird's gonna happen. And the weird thing happens because of that public prefix. So let's pop back into Unity and let that compile for a second. And once it's done with that, if I hit play, I get that index out of range exception error again, which seems really strange because I told it exactly what to put in the array. Well, here's the problem. Once you make this public, unlike other variables, Unity serializes arrays. And it's doing this to try to help you, but by trying to help you, it makes some things more uh, difficult to understand. So if I go back here, I have, my game was Half-Life, but I changed that in the editor. And every time I've been, com I've been saving and compiling, it hasn't changed back. And the reason why is Unity overrides information from the script with information that has been serialized in the inspector. Serialized means once you change this public value in the inspector, it saves that into the scene data so that you cannot uh, have it default to be what it used to be through the script anymore. It now defaults to whatever value was serialized or saved into the scene data. And when working with arrays, because arrays can be you know, so many different things, uh, it just defaults to making it an empty array, an array that has nothing in it. Now, if I go back here to Unity, my example array here, and if you, you just click that little triangle there to open it up, right now it's size zero. I'm gonna make it size five. And I'm gonna make these values something very different from what they were in the script. So I'm gonna do 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So now if I hit play, it's gonna tell me that my element zero is 10 instead of the element zero I assigned in the script. And that's because Unity is trying to make it so that you can have on your team one person who's the programmer who's making the script and one person who's the designer who's working with Unity in the editor. And they can both kind of work harmoniously. You can have somebody who doesn't have very much coding knowledge still be able to affect things in game, which is a good idea, but in this example, it can make things much more difficult for beginners. So that's an array. Like I said, the main drawback with arrays using C Sharp is that in Unity, um, with the version of um, Mono that Unity uses, you cannot dynamically resize these. Once you create an array and start the scene, uh, that array is whatever size it was to begin with. Uh, you can't make it bigger, you can't make it smaller. You can, however, change the values inside. I could um, let's say, for example, here in my start method, I could say that example, and I want to do uh, index 2, is equal to 50. Now, this will override the inspector now, because this is happening after I hit the play button. All of this uh, global stuff is initialization variables. Those are happening before the start method is called. So, oh wait, let's go back. Actually, no, I don't need to do that. <laughs> Let's go back to Unity here if I can make up my mind. Um, okay, cool. And if I hit play, it's still going to tell me what 0 is, which is 10. But I can look over here and see that element 2 has changed to 50, where it was something else before. However, this change happened during play mode. So if I go out of play mode, it's going to default back to what it was before. So, yeah. And some of the drawbacks and some of the good things about arrays here. Um, let's see, what are we talking about next time? I think we're going to talk about vectors uh, and how those work in Unity. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. Um, you can join our Discord channel where I'm chatting pretty much every day. Uh, you can find the resources for this project on the Git, which I have linked in the description down below. Otherwise, have yourself a wonderful day.